Cody, you are? Yeah, I'm going now. We're all recording now. Are you looking? Mike, are you recording song? video? Hell yeah, I'm recording video. 18 in hard to Chris. I'm recording it so goddamn 18 hard. 18 in <laughs> <laughs> Did Norris leave? Oh, he's trying yeah, to. Man. <laughs> he's like, I'd like to fucking leave. You guys won't let me out. Right. One, two, three. Hold on, fucking this poor guy. I was. Uh, he got 18 in life for a while. 18 and Norris got to. He's got to fucking go. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's go. All right, we're ready. Never been more ready. Hey uh, guys, welcome to Cult Film Interview, the podcast where we discuss the films you love, but no one else gets, and we see if they still hold up tonight. It is Furlong versus Brown, Terminator versus Highlander, and there can only be one. Because we're talking about Pet Cemetery 2. So let's start the show. Hi right, guys, thanks for joining the cult. We really appreciate it. Do us a favor, head over to iTunes, leave us a review. We will give you a shout out at the end of the show. We got one to do! Shout out! So make sure you head over to iTunes, you leave those reviews so that we can say your name at the end of this show. Uh, not this one, but... Just gonna say their name. That's it. <laughs> Joe. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Cult Film Review. By the way, Joe. Ryan. <laughs> when you're done leaving a review, All Amanda. Head over <laughs> to coldfilmandreview.com. Watch all the latest videos. Get up on all the latest podcasts. Then check out our YouTube page. Like, subscribe there. And then uh, May 10th, Buffalo 66 coming to Phoenix Film Bar. They can get tickets where, Chris? The film bar, phx.com. That is correct. Mm. They can get tickets there. Tonight, we, oh, I'm sorry. At first, as always, man, I almost forgot about you guys. I am joined by <laughs> Kyle Smith. Hi, how's it going? Chris Wilbright. Hey, what's up? And Michael Salustio. Hello, everybody. Tonight, we're talking about Pet Cemetery 2. It was directed by Mary Lambert. Uh, it was written by Richard Outent. And came out in 1992, had a budget of $8 million <laughs> and made $17 million in the box office. Currently has a rating of R and sits at a 24% on Rotten Tomatoes. Very important to notice, though, that the audience has given it a 30. Um, this is Chris's <laughs> pick. He also did the whiteboard, so I just want to note that that 30 is in there. Chris, why did you pick Pet Cemetery 2? Because I watched this movie for the first time like a couple of months ago, and by the time I got finished with it, I was like, could this be a cult film at some point? Because um, I found some very laugh out loud moments going on in this film, and I actually it actually made it kind of a fun experience because I, I was just thinking it was just going to be boring, like because I wasn't super memorable from when I first saw it when it came out in the early 90s. And uh, so I, I had some fun watching it, and I wanted to bring it in and see if you guys maybe thought it could be a cult film in the future. Mm. When was the first time or most recent time that you saw Pet Cemetery 2, Kyle? Uh, actually, this is the first time I've watched it all the way through. Um, I have saw what's, fu what's funny is when we were, uh, we were just uh, out in uh, Colorado a few weeks ago, where the arcade bar we were at, Hap happened to be playing this shit on the TV. So, like, there's a chunk of the night where I just sat there and I was just watching this on the TV. And I was like, what is this? Chris was like, Pet Cemetery 2. It's hilarious. And I was like, this looks funny as hell. Like, <laughs> I, I really thought for a second you were like, and there wasn't this arcade. I'm there. Pet Cemetery 2, the arcade game. <laughs> that would be wow. fucking incredible. Collector's <laughs> item, yeah. dude. <laughs> what hey, the fuck? fuck? Yeah, it's so, got an arcade game? So it's funny. I saw the I saw the the scene of Clancy killing uh, his steps his stepson and his his uh, wife at the arcade bar, and then with like this, no sound on with no sound at all. So I was like trying to put together. I'm like, so what's happening right now? It turns out I was pretty close to accurate when I saw it with sound. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What about you, Mike? When did you see this in theaters? Yeah, I don't even know. <laughs> I, I didn't see it in theaters, uh, but I definitely saw this on ninety four, like Showtime or something like that. Okay. I don't know. I've seen it before. Definitely a movie channel play. Yeah, for sure. 
I have never seen Pet Cemetery 2 before. This was my first watch. Wow. Yeah. Okay. A yeah, couple of first time watchers here. Never been interested. Well, I, I have a never ha, been Has everybody here seen the original Pet Cemetery? Yes. 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 Okay. So there we go. We all have that re- that to reference at least yeah. going into this one. Then d- super helpful to have that too for this movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. They lay it out pretty quick and easy. <laughs> yeah. It's called the sarcasm. Old- yes, and. Oh. Yeah. Hey! Hey! Time for <laughs> plots with Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, you know what? Sometimes breakups can be hard. Divorces can be hard, and in this case, it's the same thing. The mother starts off with this uh, this woman who is an actress, and uh, she dies on set in front of her son by being electrocuted. <laughs> so I love you're laughing right now. It's, it's just so, so ridiculous. It's such a powerful, mentions. powerful, sad scene. Uh, <laughs> so then, you know, uh, this, this kid he's got to he's got to go live with dad. Man, he's got to go, and dad lives in this small town. Uh, while he's there. He's immediately bullied because, you know, I guess he's from California and we all know how that is. Um, uh, So they go to bully him. Uh, His dad is a veterinarian. Mm -hmm. So, you know, irony. Um, And then uh, he, uh, they decide to bury this, this, he meets one guy who's his friend and his dad is the sheriff and his sheriff is very abusive to to the stepson, right? And one day he gets pissed off and he kills his dog with a gun. <laughs> yeah. So they decide, "Hey, let's go bury it in this place that everyone tells us not to fucking bury things." <laughs> so they go up there, they bury the dog. "Hey, guess what? Dog comes back to life." Uh, causes all kinds of ruckus. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then uh, next thing you know, they decide to do uh, to bury a human too, and then that's where shit gets real bad. And then another human, and then another human, and then another and human. They t- and they bury a human, and they bury a human, <laughs> it's like Russian and they dolls. so on human. and so on. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it in a nutshell. That was a weird way to. That, I it, think you could have boiled it down to: there's a cemetery that brings things back to life, and somebody threw something in there. I don't know, man. There's a lot of there's a lot of motivators in this. <laughs> I feel like we have to talk about. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. Uh, I don't know if any. Not enough you can cover it in a sense, wrap up, but though, you know. Yeah, yeah dude. I it's don't a know. lot. We'll yeah, talk lot. about them though. When we come right back dude, after these messages, I controlled the show there for a second. It was me. <laughs> <laughs> like Mike's was a, time, and we can talk about that later. You're right. I will. <laughs> I felt like a fucking psychic or something. Oh shit. And we're back. We're talking about Pet Cemetery 2. Man, does this open spooky. Let's just say that. Open yeah. spooky? Yeah, we open up in a castle. Creepy, creepy castle that does, just doesn't seem right. Looks like an old hammer film. Does look something. Like an old hammer film. It does. And you know what's funny yeah. is it got me. It, I thought like I thought I thought like they where they were gonna go was like, oh, are they gonna give me some sort of bullshit backstory about like the history of this <laughs> burial site and how I it was so established? Too. That's and what like I, thought too, I instantly yeah. just said out loud, like, not needed. Because <laughs> that's what I thought was happening. And then I was like, oh, it's a movie. Okay. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad you were surprised by that. I was too, probably the first time I saw it like that. I like I was like, oh man, it's not gonna be some fucking weird old like uh, the first burial. Yeah, on the exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, some cheesy retelling. Yeah. Well, you know, and then uh, you know she's she's acting, and what happens is a terrible, horrible mishaps on the set. It's like something from fucking Final Destination. Yeah. So she's right her face off. Edward Furlong sees this, he freaks out, and the dad decides. Let's move back to uh, the mom's hometown, I think, is yeah. what it is. And let's uh, fresh start. You know what I'm thinking? Fresh start, son. It's, it's gonna be, we're going to be called the Febreze Brothers because it's feeling so fresh in here. It's like the opposite <laughs> of L.A. <laughs> Febreze Brothers. I love it. You got other guys referenced it in a fucking Pet Sematary 2 episode. So they, uh, uh, after mom is dead and a, a fried, you know, barbecued style, uh, they decided, hey, well, let's bury her back in the hometown and we're going to live there too because, you know. Got to be close to mom. Got to yeah. be close to mom. You know, makes sense. And it so seems Jeff, like Jeff they, can't yeah. handle this. He's, you know, yeah. Apparently, he's his psyche is weak. 
Well, he's just a little upset that he they ha- had to move. He didn't want to have to start new somewhere. Yeah. Well, he does start new, and he has to go to school with, of course, the fucking bulliest kids in all the, the land. That kid has been a bully in a, a few movies. He looks, <laughs> he looks super familiar. Like, yeah. I've seen him uh, in younger roles or yeah, something. Yeah, wait a second. Hold on. Isn't he? Is but he, also, yeah, he uh, also mixed sorry. in with the bullies will soon be Jeff's best friend, Drew. Yeah, he befriends Drew, who is uh, he's some is like bullied, but also with the bullies. He's, yeah, he's in the that. crew, but he gets picked on by them. Was he in the he's crew? A punching bag? Yeah, I think he was in the crew. Do you guys want to know who that kid is, by the way? Yeah. And when I tell you, you're gonna be like, "What the fuck?" It's yeah. he, it's it's Tom Hanks' best friend in Big, Jared Rush. Oh shit, yeah. you're right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he was so cool in that. Yeah, I thought it was him, and I was like, "Oh, that's right. He's like such a nice, wholesome kid in that yeah. movie." <laughs> and this one, he's like such a fucking scumbag. Yeah. Go so on. He's got an Anthony Michael Hall thing. He can go. He can go bully. <laughs> he, can, he can go. go, go nice. He's got a wide range, man. He can play anybody, <laughs> depending on his age. Yeah. yeah. And this one, he plays a bully. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's a real and fucking it, piece of shit. And what happens when you're fucking new in the Midwest and you're from California? This is like Hocus Pocus, dude. <laughs> but you know what? Every like, fucking movie. It's dude. every it's, movie. Yeah, and it just, I, I just don't understand it. It's like he literally gets dropped off. Maybe it's because he was dropped off in a veterinarian van that like made him target. They made Jeff Prime target, but it's just yeah. like he's literally just. A random kid walking in, but it's such a small town, I guess. People are like, oh, new kid, I'm going to fuck your life up. Well, yeah. he, they're he like, notices. oh, your mom just fucking died. We're going to make it worse. Oh, yeah, I mean, they take it well, to such I an extreme. I was going to say, 90s bullies seem so much harder, dude. Like, they go for the jugular nah, they, still, shit. they still do that shit now. <laughs> it's just you can't get away from it now because they got the fucking internet and Facebook and shit, well, dude. Edward Furlong, he they he moved, you know, he helps his dad move into the veterinarian office, and he ends up adopting a cat, you know, be, yeah. I guess like to well, befriend, and he mint, brings well, I stupidly love brings it to school. Well, like, I, I, I did want to say I love with that cat. There was a funny little nod to the first film because I was like, it was like the same shot of the cat jumping. I was just like, oh yeah. shit, is that the cat? No, it's not the cat. Okay, it's not church. Yeah, uh, I was like, oh, they're doing the cat thing again. Yeah, you know, it's a I, that's, right, that's movie. Uh, well, no, I thought, <laughs> oh, they're doing I, the pet thing again. Know, that's I weird. Like, I was like. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, two, huh? Just more of the pets, huh? Yeah. <laughs> this one was odd. They went with goldfish. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just thought, no, I was like, I, I didn't think, like, I, I was like, it was a good little trick they did at first. So you're like, oh, they're not doing a different animal. They're just doing their new cat again. I think there's quite a few nods in this movie. To oh, several there is things. for sure. Yeah. 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 yeah, but no, you're right. He he finds, he's as he's cleaning up the this this massive uh, fucking veterinarian it's hospital. Like society. Yeah. You know, like, uh, he finds these kittens and he keeps one of them and he decides, you know what you do with a new kitten? You take it to school with you. Yeah, wow, dude. The bully picks up on this what? immediately. Yeah, Kyle, but you don't see the fucking gravitas that is in the acting choice that Edward Furlong made by bringing this cat to school. That wasn't in the script. <laughs> oh, was that was that his choice? That was his choice. He said, Damn. "Listen, listen." He said, "Jeff would move to this town. He'd be so alone. He lost the only person he loved, his mother." God, if Edward Furlong came up to me and like was discussing acting yeah. notes, I would just be like, "Dude." He's Shut so up, sad. He's a director. Listen, he said he's so Mary. Mary, he's so sad. Mary. He calls her by first name basis. Mary, he's so sad. Just so sad that when he shows up to this town, he has no friends. And he meets this kid. Yeah. And now it's his friend. Okay, don't, so, go, don't go that low. I'm not going to hear you on the show. He's <laughs> going to take it to school with them. And this is where the conflict with the bully comes from, Mary. And Mary said, brilliant. Because otherwise, the shit does not make sense. Yes. <laughs> this shit makes no no the mission makes no fucking sense. It's the only way. It, like I'm like, who brings a fucking cat to school? Number one. And who in middle school brings a cat to school and doesn't get caught through a whole fucking hour of class? Yeah, I think that's weird, a weird choice. But I also think like, you know, everybody's got this um this n- nice feeling towards animals and anytime one's in danger. You know, that's like draws out a huge reaction. I feel like they really do show you the animals in danger in this film. Well, because after that, yeah, yeah, after that, we have a, a shit fuck. The bully gets we out of class. Sick, we got His a name's sick Clyde. bike chase. Clyde gets out Clyde. of there. Yeah. Rips the cat out of poor Jeff's hands. Nah, gets... He hands him the fucking cat. I yeah, know, he, he literally hands him the cat. I know he does. Yeah, he's let me see it. your cat. And yeah, I'd be like, go. no. So yeah, weird. but he's he's like, oh, this is all my big friends. This yeah. guy definitely wants to be uh, my this, friend. This, this is how you you try to turn an enemy into a friend. Yeah. You hand him a kitten. So he hands him a kitten, and this fucking maniac then gets on his bike and races through this fucking wooded town, whipping this kitten around mm-hmm. like fucking. What's he yelling in its face after they pass the Creed house? 
He yells something. Are you fucking scared now? Or something like that in this kitten's <laughs> face. Like he's the toughest dude <laughs> on the planet. Shaking this kitten going 100 miles an hour right. on his bike. <laughs> yeah. It's unnerving, actually. I was like, I didn't like it. You know, <laughs> I, it, it, hit, it hit a nerve with me. They did it creatively. I read up on it and like, yeah, like most of it was puppets or whatever. But was then real cats for that, for that you know, five second shot. It was like, all right, he rode, he held it up. He did it. They stopped, you know, it wasn't like a, a high in, intense scene actually. So I read that they're they really careful about that shit. 300 kittens. <laughs> yeah. We lost 299 <laughs> kittens before we figured out we didn't really need to do any of this shit. Hilarious. This movie yeah. holds the world record for largest kitten yeah. budget. I thought yeah. it was Milo and Otis. 300 kittens that they use. Yeah. All for the scene. What they did show is he talks about the kitten's head getting caught in the smoke and popped off and they buried it in the pet cemetery and it's going to come back to life. thing is you didn't see is they actually shot that with about 250 kittens before they figured it wasn't going to work. <laughs> Jesus, this that's wasn't, fucking horrible. Yeah, this wasn't going to work <laughs> with the well audience. Dark. Yeah, so they get to the pet cemetery and they're like, sorry, your kitten's fucking dead. Head came off. Oh, horrible. whoop de doo oh. um, You know, I left the carcass somewhere around right here. Up, it's right. essentially what he tells Jeff. Number one, he like I watched this movie too. He wasn't that far behind them. No, he wasn't. Jeff was not. I was like, the one kid who took the, the kid, because the, one kid comes running from the cemetery. I'm like, bro, you who do you play for? Yeah. You are so fast. <laughs> what team are you on? <laughs> yeah, so then uh Jeff uh Jeff finds a kitten who's locked in a bird cage. I was relieved. Right. Yeah, so relieved. Symbolic, Kitten's right? totally fine and Symbolic. everything. But then that's when we get uh we're reintroduced for those of you who've seen the original film to the pet cemetery. Keep and out. might I say uh I did make this note while watching it. They obviously hired a landscaper because the path yes. to the ancient burial much cleaner than it used to be. Yeah, <laughs> it's much easier to get up to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, it almost looks like they installed yeah. stairs. Lots of people have been going up there yeah, since yeah, then. Part yeah. two, bigger, better, bolder. You know what I mean? <laughs> better. Yeah, that, yeah. Fucking faster, quicker, um, longer. Yeah. <laughs> Uncut. I, I like though. I, I like though that they tried to keep the cemetery like close to the original. Like the kitten was in a bird cage. The bird cage is a prominent. F- feature in the original yeah. so i kind of like mm-hmm. that they try to tie that in i liked the look of the cemetery in the original though it looked so much creepier Dude, this, this, more, more shitty and why overgrown does, and yeah this film has spray. that fucking cheesy straight to video 90s look for some reason the lighting and i think in the I camera think it, tricks but then i think it's a lot of set design i feel like set design was just kind of like yeah it's good enough like that was like that was like that was the catchphrase of the set design people it's good enough <laughs> yeah we did all right <laughs> I think we did the best that we could with the time we were allowed. Yeah, we did okay, Bill, right? Yeah. That looks all right, okay. Yeah, Bill, uh, that was kind so of mega reference He gets to the cat back. So he, anyways, he gets the cat back, and Drew actually comes back at this point, because, again, Drew is part of this bully team for some reason. But he doesn't want to be. I don't think he, he is. doesn't want to be. He is, because they're like, come on, Drew! Yeah, they just, he, they pick on him, and he's just like his only friend. Oh, that's friends, true, they do. So... And then so Drew comes back and is like, hey, man, you got your Oh, cat. he's like, I've never seen anyone punch Clyde before. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then Drew's punched- like, Drew switches teams right Dude, then and there. He's like, honest, Team Jeff. Clyde takes a punch like he's fucking Rocky Balboa. Yeah, he takes a hit like a champ. <laughs> His eyes didn't even well up, no, dude. No, <laughs> dude. He literally hit, knocked him to the ground. He didn't touch the ground. He just hovered right b- right before it and then just rose up. <laughs> rose up. Uh, God. And said, you fucking hit me. And yeah. beat the living. Be, it, what's funny is like the fight looked very, it, it like it went from looking like two kids scuffling like some really like uncoordinated fists flying from Clyde. And it got and then real all, fucking and serious. And then all of a sudden it cut to like a reverse shot and Clyde's like doing the pick him up from the shirt and like, you know, throwing the right hooks at him. I'm like, this guy's yeah. become a boxer in two seconds? Like, <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, he Clyde. immediately, tre- yeah, it goes from the clumsiest fucking kid fight to like seriously like a martial arts film. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's so weird. Like he was like high yaing after each punch. And then, and he gets then, the shit kicked out of him. Yeah, but then Edward Furlong gets up from that, like not really that phase. Yeah. Let's out his normal like. Egg. Oh man, which I think yeah. I like is his other move. Yeah. It's just a, oh gee, god damn it! Like, yeah, <laughs> that's a, the Edward Furlong. So also in this movie is Drew's dad, who's our stepdad, who is Gus, who is Clancy Brown. And oh man, he's the Clancy Brown. He's uh he's a fucking character in this movie. He is. I'll tell you what, he's, yeah, uh, he's, he's the sheriff. Yeah, I, he's, I think I, I said it before. I'll say it again. Biggest piece of shit in this movie. But yeah. hold on, like, Hard did you guys ass. feel Hard like ass. you could tell like right away that? He was gonna yes. be a piece of shit. Yeah, you yes. know, it. I feel Absolutely. like it took me a couple scenes I, to kind of be like, all right, this guy really 
is a piece of shit. I knew it as soon as I saw the name Clancy Brown because he doesn't <laughs> really play anybody but like kinda big menacing true. assholes. Yeah. 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 I mean, he had a shiny moment in Shawshank. <laughs> yeah, he did. There was a moment. <laughs> A moment where he seemed like he was okay. Yeah. And then he was Then he just turned into the Kurgan yeah. right there in the Shawshank Redemption. Um, no, that I, I would say this. The only time that I thought maybe he's a normal sheriff character is like once the funeral was finished and then all of a sudden the reporters kind of start funneling and he's like, here we go. Yep, all right. Yep. And he's like, I'm going to go handle these reporters yeah, and give this family some space. Like, but it really just... It ended right there. He just became a dick which, after By that. the way, which by the way, for a small town sheriff, he makes it sound like, oh, here we go again. Dude, when we're it's... in the spotlight. Right, right. Yeah. Better handle the press. Well, they were in the well, spotlight maybe, two years ago. Well, yeah. Maybe yeah. Miss Hollow was in the like she maybe she did drum drum up some press there or something. And that's why he's so bitter about the you know, Creed the Murder Town now lays to rest yeah. a famous actress. Kinda, yeah. <laughs> Probably, dude. It was his ex girlfriend. Yeah. So, know? so yeah, you're right. Though he still hasn't let it go. He could have been famous. Once he take, once they take Zowie to the vet because he got scratched by the dog, got scratched by a cat. Uh, no, that was rabbits. Oh, rabbits. Yeah, rabbits. Right, rabbits. Yeah, the right. dog has a tendency to, to fuck with the rabbits. Okay, so Gus has, Gus has a tendency to breed rabbits. Well, yeah, yeah. What's Gus's <laughs> boner about rabbits? I think it's I don't the know. furs. He, he sells them. Yeah, the furs. No, he sells. The, there's a sign in front of their house that says "rabbits, eighteen dollars." Oh, he just decides. Yeah, I don't to think he was doing going that. Going to yet. a new business what later on. You know what business? Yeah, he's taking I, that side rabbit cash. You know what business I'm going into, honey? What the rabbit business, <laughs> dude? People in town, rocking. dude. You know what? It makes sense in this town because if we go back to our pet cemetery history and we go back to episode one. We remember that there is an oil refinery up the road, and semi trucks are always screaming down. I bet your rabbits getting killed left and right, and he's in the right business. He's breeding new rabbits. Who's just letting people the rabbits need new around? people need new pets all the time? Who's it is just, a weird little thing to do. Like, but I just considered it small town, like make an extra side small, cash. Small town hick sheriff habits. So like, as yeah. I don't know. As, you know, as sheriffs do, in small, small town towns. sheriffs do. No, we'll take breed up. rabbits. As this goes, weasels. On. As this goes on a little bit, in and we start getting these rumors of what the cemetery does. Uh, Gus gets real mad at fucking Drew's dog throughout this whole movie until it just fucking boils over. And Gus to the, says, "To the point I'm that he turns shoot it. no, but before he even shoots it, to the point that Gus turns the rabbit cage into an electrified fence." Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Who fucking does that? Gus. Gus. Gus dude. Yeah, Gus. Same oh, guy that just sheriff. shoots a dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, that's what it boils down to. And then the dog, a dog, of course, as dogs do, and when there's a giant cage of fucking rabbits, it goes up, sticks its nose in it, gets shocked. If that's not bad enough, then Gus is like, oh, I'm going to shoot the fucking dog now. Yeah. Was that the plan? I thought the plan was just for it to get shocked, not to get shot well, immediately after. It got yeah. shocked, and then he escalated further. Which, yeah. by I mean, the way, great shot, because that dog was long gone in the woods, and then he just fires off randomly. A scope. No, he had a scope on that bad yeah, boy, he Chris. Yeah, sco he scoped that rifle he on that 38. Listen, he, when you're a small town sheriff shooting dogs is probably your other hobby yeah, yeah. you have shooting three random hobbies. dogs Bam. shoot dogs you Bam. you, you enforce the law and you breed rabbits he said that's i gave that boy now, ample that, time in that order yeah yeah that's when you realize he's a ruthless killer little did he know though that at killing this dog would set forth such a catastrophe for him because what happens such is a chain reaction of events drew decides yeah. with jeff that they're gonna go bury this dog at the pet cemetery. Well, yeah, Drew doesn't tell Jeff why they're going there and bring him back. Drew that's just tells Jeff, "I'm gonna go bury him in a really nice spot up the yeah. hill." Well, you got to bury your own, also. That's a big thing here. Well, the yeah. inter interesting thing about pet cemetery is you don't actually your dog doesn't come back to life if you bury it in pet cemetery. You have to go beyond it into the Indian burial ground to actually. Yeah, that's pet cemetery two. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Point oh. Yeah. Thank you. No, that's I, no. I was just thinking that like it's funny because you enter Pet Cemetery and it's like this round, you know, like cemetery, and then but you have to go beyond it to use like to get to the dark soil, the sour soil, mm -hmm. to uh, to bring actually reanimate yeah. Indian burial Pet Cemetery. Exactly. Now this is where it gets fucking mind bendy, right? Because they bury Zowie, and three days later, Zowie comes up, and Zowie's mission now is to hunt down a tree. Was it three days later? <laughs> yeah, was it three days? <laughs> I, I, I felt like that was. Hours later, you no, know, it's three days. It is three days later, but you like, missed the Jesus? joke, which was way better. Yeah, no, but going. Zowie comes back and actually, you know, and there's clearly something wrong. It's all gross yeah. and nasty and full of dirt and blood, and well, and, and, and the parents are pissed. Gus, yeah. Gus, and Mom are pissed because they he said he was out burying his dog, so they probably cut him a little slack. 
And he, she, he comes back, you know, and they're like, all right, now you're in more fucking trouble. Yeah, you like that? You like how the dog coming back gets him in more fucking trouble? Yeah. It's like, yeah. They're not questioning, but like, again, why is this dog full of dirt and blood? Again, this is why I'm saying this is not three days later, because Gus, yeah. Gus picks him up from the road Takes him home, and then the dog shows up at the door. I'm pretty sure they said the three same days later. fucking night. It is the same like night. I feel like it's like that night. I, I don't know. I feel, I feel like, like I feel like I feel later. like Drew still has dirt on him from the fucking <laughs> burial session, <laughs> right? The burial and the dog session. comes. I'm pretty is sure back. you're right, but they still say three fucking days later. I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure. Who says three days later? Jesus. <laughs> Is it like, I'm is, saying. Is it like, like, is it like that? Is I think it, he's just thinking of the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it like that thing on the internet? Three days later. But here's the thing. Something's clearly wrong with the dogs. So they have to call yeah. um, Chase, Chase to come get it's the dog Chase. and check it out. That's the dad. The dog. Oh. Edward Furlong's dad. It's Pops. Yeah. The guy Take from the ER, right? I remember Chase his Matthews. fucking that name. Matthews. That guy's from yeah. ER, right? Oh, the he's, ball guy? Yeah, he's. I think so. Plays yeah. Goose. Can I tell you? <laughs> Anthony Edwards. Yeah. Oh, I've never goose. been a big fucking fan of him as an actor. I kind of okay. liked him. <laughs> All right, you don't have to be. I don't hate him, but I've never liked it him. It sounds like you fucking hate him. No, no, yeah. no. <laughs> Weird. Like, who has a strong opinion about Anthony Edwards? Yeah. Like, who? Maybe Anthony Edwards does, but that's it. Such a weird person to be like, you know what? I fucking hate. I do. You know what? I just like it's a safe person to hate. I, I don't. I, I don't hate him, but I just feel like he's always just. He's always like that. Se- he's so easy just to uh, like over. He's always that secondary character because I feel like he's just so easy to out. Uh, no, nah, he was like I'm the main sure. dude in ER. He, yeah, I'm pretty sure he led the fucking the, the <laughs> halls yeah. of the so ER. Oh, everybody was getting the fucking Ames fucking haircut. No, they were getting the goddamn Clooney. <laughs> yeah, they're getting yeah. Caesar, yeah. and Clooney came and went you pretty fast. Yeah, on that because show. he. But yeah. Anthony yes, Edwards he's a successful good actor with char- charismatic. Yeah. Things. And this things. guy does not have charismatic things. things. I think you just don't like him Anyways. in Pet Cemetery 2, maybe. No, Regar- I don't like Regar- him. Regardless, let's move I'm on. I'm not a big fan of I don't want to bash it, good old Anthony. We're not going to bash Cody him. Is. I think he's, I think he's no. just an okay actor at TV at best. He takes Zowie back Fucking to his- hashtag fuck Anthony Edwards. Yeah, Jeez, Jeez, yeah. I oh hope he doesn't God. listen to the show. God damn. It's funny you say that, Chris. This is his favorite podcast. He just ruined it. Dude, what if it was? He's like, you know what? Fuck you, Fuck Cody. Those guys. He goes on Lisa Fucking Review. Assholes. I do listen. Fuck Cody. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hashtag fuck Cody. Yeah, Chris Army, five stars. <laughs> I hope. Should've known I'd be looking. I'd be honored if Anthony Edwards said that. I so knew, I knew Anthony Edwards. Sir would be Anthony. So Zoe comes back and um Zowie. Zowie, Zowie. Co- Zowie comes back. Zowie and, too, though. Yeah, Chase Chase uh, does about all of his tests. He takes her blood, takes her home to take care of her. The wound is not healing on its own. It's just getting more gooey. rancid and disgusting. And That's shit. what I'm thinking three days of. It's been three days and the wound hasn't healed. Yep. That's yep. what I'm yep. thinking of three days from. Yep. There, there we go. go. Thanks, okay. Mike. Boom. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. So, so also, we got it. We got no a dog. Heartbeat. We got a dog with no heartbeat. Heartbeat. It smells like it smells like stinky cheese because that wound is just. Getting gangly, Ooh, yeah, disgusting. you know, and he decides I'm gonna send a blood test off to a colleague and uh, let Zowie go. Zowie oh, breaks yeah, out and yeah. murders a fucking thing of kittens. Yeah, this, this murders all scene, of these. Oh, that's true. This yeah. scene actually, when I was younger and saw this movie, like was sho- kind of shocking to me. I'm I'm a cat lover, so it hits a nerve, you know. So like they don't even show that much now you, that you go back and watch it, no, but it's, it's just like gore though. It's just gore, just like mutilated cat bodies like inside this kennel yeah, i couldn't even pick out a cat piece in there by the way the mom is. and the two twins that show up i feel like that's a throwback to the shining yeah i definitely thought there was something weird with that yeah. like oh, it was just such a weird is that a thing from twins. the shining i thought that would have been There's like two, a thing twins. that was referenced back to um like the first part of cemetery but i didn't remember it. i don't remember there being twins in the first There's i not, remember yeah. there being twin cats and lady <laughs> you know that might be what it twin is cat, there was like twin there was like octuplets or whatever you call inside that one cage i don't know why they were all in the same so cage. The, yeah, those the 900 kittens that were in that cage that were mutilated by... Uh, that is a pretty, like, well, funny but terrible it's a scene. It's scene. I'm they, like, well, they, uh, they just used the cat... They just used Dark the, humor. Well, the nice thing is they just reused the kittens from that earlier scene with the bike spoke that they killed the 250 kittens with, threw them oh in my that God. cage. <laughs> Bring them back and that fake go. facts. There you go. That That's an area that made me cringe, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I like saying it. It just made Chris... It, yep. it, yeah, so weak. so Zowie get she chews her way through what looks like some pretty solid caging, and now just pl- kills, pops up wherever kills where she wants. kittens. And meanwhile, Jeff 
and uh, uh, kid, Drew. Drew starts with a D. Thank you. Ends with a Roo. Um, <laughs> Carrie. Are off at parting it up because guess what? In like any horror movie, it's Halloween. And they are drinking at Pet Cemetery. Right. Well, and he's de- and and Drew is not supposed to be out on Halloween night because he's no. being taught a lesson from Gus. That's yes. right. Gus yeah. has to parent him and be his father. Yeah, which is like which means, I don't think he does. Which really. means he can be abusive without the drinking, which is real weird. <laughs> well, that's the thing is like I feel like he kind of like that they edge you into it where it's like he goes he's like where you been when he picks him up on the side of the road and then he's like you know what you, you have to learn lessons the hard way I do too and he kind of takes responsibility like in that sense. And then, like, but yeah, he he just doesn't. Have, he has a short fuse, so he just keeps pushing it more to the extreme. Like with the with the discipline, the wife goes against him and lets uh, Drew Drew buddy Drew buddy get out uh, go out on Halloween night. <laughs> Drew buddy, and what happens on Halloween night? I'll tell you what happens on a Halloween night. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. A lot of gas ghastly ghouls and. Trick or treats. So they end up going. Yeah, they're to drinking the, at Pet Cemetery. Uh, yeah, Gus finds out. Gus shows the fuck up, and, and he just and the bully fucking checks Drew. They real they bitch inad- move, dude. I bitch will, move. I do want to say bitch move. Bitch move. And they also inadvertently start a fire in the woods that Which Gus got, walks right past. Yeah, it goes nowhere. That goes no. I thought that was gonna go somewhere in the story. I, know, I, was, I was like, like oh, they're gonna burn oh, down the shit. cemetery. Yep, yep. And then it was like, no. No. <laughs> no it just goes to Gus like trying to beat up on Drew, yeah. which yeah, Drew takes a but, swing at him. Well, good f- good on him. Wasn't and the fire there for telling no, Gus? No, 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 no. Yeah, someone knocked over, over a bottle and it Big goddamn flame lantern fucking, fire shot up. Yeah, Chris, the whole goddamn forest was burning down. It was really get, weird. You gotta get fire. You gotta get yeah. fire in the nineties. And yeah, no, Drew takes a fucking swing at Gus. Gus swings back, and then Zowie, Zoe Zowie just comes out of nowhere from the darkness. Takes a big old bite out of Gus's neck. Yeah. Yep, rips like a full piece of flesh off. Yeah, R- kills Gus. Kills Gus dead. Mm-hmm. And then what happens? What happens? Instead what of saying happens? this dog killed this man, please do something. They decide they're gonna go try to bury yeah like we'll bury ask. him i didn't get that shit i didn't get that either it's like why and that's where it's this- like okay this guy is a tormentor of your life is a general piece of shit seems like he's a bad sheriff in general and a wild animal killed him yep. why are we trying to fix here's, this situation here, here's <laughs> it's no, gonna be better here's what i got <laughs> here's what i got what they're trying to justify with the end of this film in this this portion of it is that it's fucking jeff's plan from the whole time so that 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 he can dig up the mall okay this is not no okay, no. no jeff is not guys jeff is not playing an intricate game of chess where he's seven moves ahead i think that's what it's supposed to be no, no. i think guys. this is a catalyst for him thinking about doing no. it with his mom i think no. this is drew panics and then buries fucking here's Gus. what i think yes i think he panics the one thing i will say that i don't quite understand is they don't it they're basing it off the idea that hey zowie just came back like they're not they're not seeing I think what what's supposed to be being communicated is that they're not seeing the evil side of Zowie. Yeah. They just saw, hey, we buried our dog and he came back. Fucking great. So now that this guy's dead, we don't have to get caught for murder. We'll just bury him and he'll come back. However, I will say, prior to the scene, they were told by Chase three days. The dog is not healing. No, he yeah. has no that's heart the rate. part. That, yeah. And that They've was the part I was going to get to. It was like, that's the only thing that doesn't really make any sense. They've right. also seen Zowie multiple times with fucking red glowing eyes. Also, yeah, he I had understand a dream, that, I but... think, at one point, right? Where the dog is in the chair and it's like showing they the know. possession of the dog. They yeah. know. Oh, they know. Yeah. So what were you saying, Mike? No, what I'm, what I don't think, I understand that you're saying that you think they know, but I don't think they do. I, I don't think, think they know. I definitely don't think Drew knows. I think Jeff knows, and mm. I think Jeff knows. I don't think so because either. I think the, the, reason, the reason I bring it up is because the only reason I bring it up is because later on in the film, when we do find out that you know that the, that fucking um, what's the f- Gus digs up the mom, right? Is because it's like the whole thing. Well, like yeah, he came here and said he had to exhume the body. It's like it's such a like a kid fucking plan. Like, well, I gotta get a share. Can't dig it up myself. It's the only way to cover this no. up to get my mom back and people not know it's me. No, that's not. I don't think that's what happens. I think Jeff takes advantage of the situation that the fact that that happens, but Gus clearly dug up the mom so that he could bang the mom again. Oh, I think that's yeah. part of it too. It's so perfectly clear. But I think he knew. I think yeah. But I think that he's playing that no, against I think, Gus. No, I think I think and once I, the opportunity presents I think, itself. Honestly, the one thing I will give Edward Furlong credit for in this movie is I feel like he is the only person who seems to have any sense of reason. 
and right and wrong but in this movie. But that's like why he's I'm like he seems like hesitant to the idea of burying this person, this animal. Like, he's like, it even uh, seems like doesn't it seem like Gus is on Edward Furlong's side at one point? Yeah, once, at the end. Yeah. It feels like that. Yeah. Exactly. But, but yeah, so that's why it feels like it's fucking Edward <laughs> Furlong's Gus plan. Comes, no. Well, I mean we can get to the ending. Yeah, we'll get But I yeah, I don't I don't think that that's I think you're reading into the ending incorrectly. Well, I don't know. I, I'm interested in what you're saying because I kind of had a feeling like that too. But but Gus comes back from the dead. Clearly, comes back from the dead. We know yeah. he's same the, night. Yep. Yeah, it is again. the same night. It is the same night. <laughs> and he is Three looking like fucking shit. Like basically, a Drew great. a Drew Batty wakes up from uh wakes up from the like his nightmare. Yeah. Right. He hears or uh, Jeff has a nightmare that Clancy Brown's looking in his window, laughing maniacally. He shows up in the dark. He's all ripped to pieces. He goes up the stairs, and you're like, "Oh shit!" Like the mom, like is yeah. up there. What, like, mm-hmm. what's yeah. she gonna do? You know, he goes in there. He's all fucked up, and she's like, "Come to bed, honey." And apparently, this rape scene, like I read, was supposed to be a lot longer, <laughs> but they cut it. And I, I don't know if that's because it was just disgusting. You know what I mean? But it. Well, you know, you don't need much in when it comes to a rape scene. A little goes a long way. Yeah, True. it's right. And yeah, you, you don't need to. You don't you need to the glamorize. You don't need the, we don't even get into the minutia of it. Interesting though that that she would originally have wanted it to be longer. I don't know what the purpose of that was. Maybe shock value or something. I don't know, oh, man. Boy. Can I be honest with you? I felt like this rape scene kind of didn't do anything. It, no, it it, it kind of reeked a little bit of like, hey, can we get our clothes off? Mm. Oh, mm-hmm. maybe. Like yeah. I kind of felt like it, it was like it creepy to me. Felt like and the gratuitous they, yeah. tit scene. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm like, this yeah. is they're gonna do this. Like, yeah, but anyways, maybe they didn't. I don't know. Yeah, yeah but here's the thing: Gus came back. I mean, Nicer. obviously, first, well, well, I mean, first night he tries to rape, but you know, the next morning he wakes up a new man, and he he's he's much yeah, he's kinder. Yeah, he's in a good mood. He's in a good mood. Yeah, yeah. He's a much kinder person. So it's like, and I think, I think if anything, this is the moment where maybe Jeff thinks, maybe I'll do my mom too. Maybe we'll bury my mom up there. If it gets planted at any point, it might be this point, but. I, I think things quickly go awry anyway after this, right? Well, mm, at first, at first he's happy. You know, Drew's happy. He's like, "Oh man, he's letting you come over tonight," and you know, he 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 served me extra pancakes this morning, and you know, and like yeah. you think everything's gonna be like different. Like yeah. he came mm-hmm. back a better person, but yeah, it does like it does slowly start to slip. Yeah, and at this point, we now get the backstory because uh, Chase, meanwhile, has spoken to the hematologist that he sent the blood sample to. He told him, hey, this is a dead dog. I don't know why you're playing jokes on me. Mm-hmm. And he tells him about the former veterinarian who's from the first film or from the era of the first film. Yeah. And uh, Chase decides to take a road trip <laughs> out to yeah. this dude's fucking house, I guess, yeah. somewhere. And go just... surprise him out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, go surprise And the guy is a hell of a taxidermist. Yep. I think that's how you say it. Kind taxidermist. Of a funny scene. <laughs> Morbidly funny. I'm not really sure what the yeah, this scene is weird to me because I could tell like what happened to the old man. Like did he go bit batshit crazy or something? Because yeah. it doesn't end in Yeah it ends no... in a way that you think the guy's insane at this point. He's like, just cackling. Yeah. Man. yeah. It was just like, like, what did that? What that didn't add anything to the film for me. Yeah, it was, it, like, it was okay. just. It made no sense to me that hey, he was cool, going. Hey, cool! Random out there. reference to the first film. Yeah, I, I don't even yeah. know if that is a reference. I don't remember that character in the first film. He was the veterinarian. I, I don't know. I guess I just didn't remember seeing. Yeah, he's him. not memorable. So, but it's all they could get. <laughs> <laughs> so job. after this, though, comes the scene where where Gus kills Clyde. Right. Well, um, um, I think I think yeah. Clancy Brown starts to turn. Well, because this is where this is again where the, I'm this, getting confused where we're at. This in the is movie, actually. this is again where I'm. I'll kind of go with my theory on on if they're a team or not, and I have I do have a solution for this. Um, because what do you mean a solution to, uh, uh, what? Yeah, to what to the problem, what math problem you talking about? Math is, problem that I'm there's about no to mathematical solve. problem. So there's two. Well, no, because here's the weird 12. thing, right? <laughs> What happens? 24. Fucking, fucking bad kid shows up on a dirt bike, of course, which right. we all know Edward right, Furlong right, right. Could, could ride way better. Yeah, we've seen that. Wait, I'm that trying one. to remember. <laughs> hold on, though. I'm trying to remember why is Edward Furlong even on a bike, and why is he not with Drew anymore? Drew, they parted ways. Like, they went separate ways, I thought. No? No, the scene ended in such a weird because way Drew- where I'm just like, 
Why are they going I think separate Drew, no, ways? Drew though. and his mom are dead at this point, I believe. No, 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 not yet. No, because they come off a dirt road and they go onto that main stretch, mm-hmm. and Drew goes one way, and Edward Furlong okay. goes the other, and the guy whiz or uh, Clyde in, whizzes by on the highway, yes. going towards Edward and, Furlong, grabs yeah. his shit. Like while he's on the dirt bike, throws him over the side of the fucking hill and then goes down there and starts spinning that fucking wheel. And he's like, hey, you ever know what it felt like to get your, or what it looked yeah, like to get your nose ripped a off? Or I was like, shit. God damn, that's brutal. Like this these fucking, bullies are hard. This bully's an asshole. Yeah. He's like, you might die. But and here's, it's like, what the fuck? Here's where the thing comes in. And Clancy Brown comes out of Sneaks nowhere up. like a fucking savior and saves Jeff. Correct. Here's the other thing that I will put in the evidence file of why that they're on the same team also. When did they even agree they're on a team? I don't know, but this is how fucked this movie they is. They kind man. of exchange a look they at one They have point. to be. They have to be. Because for Was Fancy what? Brown <laughs> to fuck his mom, he needs Edward Furlong to bury her because you must bury your own yeah. to bring them back to it's life. True. It's true. Yeah. That is the so the, he needs, he Clancy Brown needs Edward Furlong and Edward Furlong needs Clancy Brown. Yeah, for the for the to help get the body there, right? Yes, they fucking got Gus's body up there. Why couldn't they? <laughs> you know, like, well, because they needed to bear take her out of the graveyard. It's breaking the law unless you have. A yeah, cop. but then why did? Wait a minute. This makes no, no, no. You're yes. wrong. you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. And I'm going to tell you why you're absolutely wrong. Oh, because God. because Clyde comes back. What? Who is Gus Clyde's own? Nope, it's true. So you're right. Gus he takes him, Clyde's he body. Him. He killed him and buries it. And now, but the rule is you have to bury your own. Don't, you're that you so killed. Is, is, that you killed. So that's is, not the rule. Yes, it is. You bury your own pet, like that died in your in your care. You bury your own kid, yeah, your own wife. But, like, but, no, but even then, in the first movie, he didn't kill the cat. It was just an accident. Yeah, the the cat gets run over because he tries to cross. But the But that's road a with weird the rule that they it make. It is a weird rule that, that they I'm make in yes. the pet cemetery and, too. Though, and on top of that. Gus mm. kills Zowie, but fucking Drew buries him. Gus co- and, and Zowie bar- comes back. Yeah, because you got to bury your own. Right. So it's not who, it's, if you kill him again. Clyde should never have come back. Which I agree with you. That's if their Clyde, own loophole. If they, Clyde can come back from Gus, then Jeff's mom can come back from Gus as well. I, I think, agree. That was the weirdest I think, choice. But I think that's their own plot hole that they fell for with with bringing him back. I don't yeah, think that's true. the effect of the it. mother. I think that they still because dude, even at the end, like Clancy Brown does not go after Jeff at all, dude. Because after Jeff's dad. So here's what I always gather. Goes after those I gather that Clancy Brown came to life, and just like and since this is the first time we've actually, well, I, no, it no, it is the first time technically we've seen an adult come back to life in the series. Like a kid comes back to life yeah. in the first one, right? And it goes on a killing spree. Mm. But I I always got the kind of impression that they also were trying to bury their make more evil versions of themselves. Like, they were deadites. They wanted right. to, like, mm. kind of procreate in this yes. way. And that when Clancy Brown comes back to life, his whole thing is, fuck, man, I gotta get, like, some de- more dead people up in this town. Yeah, I gotta and get he was like, on the team. I know, the fucking mom. And yeah. then he goes, I'm gonna unbury her, and I'm gonna get this kid well, to bury didn't it. Didn't he also dig up um, <laughs> Drew after he was dead, too? Did he? I don't remember that. I don't remember I that thought, part. I thought they were they were dug up as well. I don't think so. I don't think so. I well, they definitely didn't bury him then. He <laughs> <I> th- <laughs> didn't have anybody to bury him. No, um, I don't think well, so. Yeah, I think it was no, just I the mom. But, right. And I think he just uses Jeff to bury her because, yeah, maybe there is but this rule. I don't I think, think Jeff did it. Jeff didn't bury her. He gives him the fucking shovel. He gives him the shovel. Yeah, he says you bury her. But own. I think he's manipulating Jeff. I don't think it's like... Jeff oh, was like, this true. is Jeff's plan the whole time. I almost feel yeah, like Jeff so was either. manipulating Clancy, but like... I yes. agree. But... Wait, what? You do? I agree that Jeff was manipulating... Cl- I, I think was there was some weird no, supernatural Je- shit going on at the end a little bit, but... But no, this is a, all the all the all the rules of this world are fucked up in this fucking movie. All well, right? yeah, it is kind of there now that we're get diving into it. You're right. Like the barrier own thing is kind of strange in the in the case of Clyde and Gus because it's like why would Gus care to bury well, Clyde? And Drew- is that to take care of like because he comes uh, Clyde comes back to just to kill Jeff? Yeah. So yeah. maybe it was just it just like, doesn't it doesn't make a lot of sense to me so y- at all. Gus planned to have Clyde come back to kill. Jeff, and if they're working together, 
Maybe then Clancy could sense. have his mom all to but himself. But he could have had his mom all to himself anyway. Seems that way. Yeah. But then, but then, at, you know, kind of simultaneously when or all this you stuff have, is going on. Or you have that bully kill him and then bury him and bring Wait, him back for his dead bully? mom. Gus, or, Gus does. Gus does. Gus does. God damn it. There's so many weird fucking things. None of this makes any sense. None of it makes any all, fucking any sense. Any of this. No. Yeah. Unless, Unless dead people can no, because then he could. Always Unless do it. Gus collected Clyde's parents and made them. Be- I think it might have been in an effort <laughs> to go after Jeff because obviously Clancy was going to okay. go after Jeff's dad, so Jeff needed a, an enemy. So I think that's probably why they added the bully because the, he's the bully the whole movie to Jeff. I, so why not make him come back as a only, dead it's thing it, to to, to fight also, him? Also, by it's the way, only, I, I don't know. I don't it, know if we talked about it, but that bully's death was fantastic. Yeah, it was great. It was, it was great so fun. We didn't talk about it, but no, like Clancy yeah. Brown, Clancy Brown. Has a motorcycle and off. just fucking his rips scar- his face no, his off. scarf gets caught in the spokes. Oh yeah, yeah, that and it did. pulls his face into the fucking and tire and gives it a look like off. whoops. He's like, like never mind. Oh, then, cool. then he yeah. grabs it up and di- just yeah. dives it in deeper. It's a double dip, man, and then, and then, he's then like, chucks Whoa! that bike like it's like nothing. Yeah, fucking yeah. superhero. Well, that's strength. when Drew Drew witnesses this murder, and that's when he's like, "Fuck, shit's out of control." He rides back home. Then Clancy gets back there, and he starts chasing him around the house, trying to get to him. Drew jumps out the window, jumps in mom's car, who's conveniently pulling up at that exact time, gets in. He's like, we got to go. Gus is trying to fucking kill us. And at that second, mm-hmm. Gus slams his body on the car and smashes like the windows with a hammer and is just trying to like kill his family. Yes. Mm-hmm. They speed off and he limps off into his truck. And then it's a high speed chase down the fucking highway. And Clancy is just fucking yeah. maniacally like trying to run them off the road. You he's gotta watch for, out. You gotta watch out for them potato he's trucks. He's known for his terrifying car chase scenes. It's, yeah. He's good uh, at it. Watch yeah. Highlander. Watch Highlander. <laughs> he looks like he wants to murder everything on the road. And it, yeah. And it's like, actually I'm like, okay, this is kind of a great scene because it's like, there is tension to it. Like I do feel like again, there's another throwback to the shining where he's mm-hmm. beaten the door in with the hammer and he says some yes. quippy line, you know? Yeah. And uh, anyways, he runs his family's vehicle into a potato truck that first of all, smashes head on. So, you know, that's instant death. And then everything falls over and crushes the car. Yeah. So it's like it was double a bunch of potatoes. Yeah. Potatoes. That's what it was. Such yeah, a weird 5, way to die. Yeah. Yeah. Of potatoes. That, that means something. That fucking potato close up of like the hand and the potatoes. Yeah. I was like, how fucking stupid is that? Yeah. It was like a leg hanging it was, out it was with like, like a blood drip. Yeah, blood drip out of <laughs> potatoes. Like, yeah. I was like, was the potatoes? potatoes? I, wondered if, I wondered if the potatoes was necessary. Yeah. I thought the car crash was car, like it was a it was a enough. real it was a real uh back to the future. It was a real over the top <laughs> it was. vibe with it. But it like made it corny. They killed him. Yeah, like it's just fucking weird. It's, it's exactly like the manure scene. Yeah. It made it corny. And not only that, like the, the other thing that kind of hurts this and, and like I like Clancy Brown. Don't get me wrong, I like I like Clancy Brown a lot, but he's almost like fucking Joker level in this, I mean, I don't, I don't have a problem with I it. I have no like, problem with him look, at all. D- p- you bury the people in in the c- like cemetery; a, they come back and they get all crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, let, let him play a, it the way he wants. Just, Fucking, I don't care. I wish it was just a little more, a little more serious with it. I, I thought it was perfect. Mm-hmm. I thought it was perfect for, for what the tone it was of the film. To be. I yeah. think, yeah. I mean, where are you going to go with this? For the tone of the film, yeah. yeah. I mean, if they if this was a more serious drama, and then you had Clancy Brown, then it'd be like, well, that guy doesn't belong. The other thing too I want to talk about is I did not like b- b- the music choices in this fucking dude. Movie. Oh, I'm so glad you brought that up. There were so many awful. times yeah. where it was like these. I don't know why I thought of it. there's like these orchestral arrangements, and I'm like, is this like an orchestral arrangement of a Metallica song? <laughs> what is this? Give me yeah. fuel, give me fire, give me this. Oh, well, not that one, but yeah, <laughs> that's the same point. Yeah, no, it is definitely tons of. <laughs> Weird ch- music choices, yeah, like, so fucking like weird. Like I'm trying it's to like be Jesus rock. and Mary Chain, like uh, fucking Ramones. Like there's some other shit going. Yeah, on I don't here, think like, there was any like actual name Ramones. Ram- no, music. there was there 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 Ramones. Ramones. credits, definitely. Ramones. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the what, one of the like in the original. Don't count. One of the songs sure is it's... sung by Tracy Lords, the porn yeah. star. Yep, yeah, yeah. Is that I the one that. when the dog dies? I I thought it was the end. Credit song because there's a song when the dog dies no, and, I, and I swear yeah. that one is like no I, I think there's another one right at the end? yeah I don't know I don't know anyway. yeah when Zowie first dies like the, that song that's the one I texted you guys like they that song clearly stole the intro to Mash theme song oh, yeah. <laughs> when it's the like, doo, doo, doo. when the dog dies it does <laughs> deepest doo, doo, doo. bluest much oh, yeah there's some weird, weird. like a shark's food. weird okay. music choices very dated music choices I feel like for a movie like uh, that it feels you know what it feels like it feels like an eclectic collection of low budget 
mu- music choice. It's like when you're a low budget film, it's like, oh, you only have that. That's only your budget. Yeah, here's like the eight you can choose from. <laughs> I guess you know, yeah. use them. Yeah, it definitely added something to this movie. Something but... shitty to it. <laughs> anyway, so the kid dies. Yeah, they yeah. kill the family. family it's dies. over. And, and that... Clancy's decided he's gonna fucking uh, unbury the mother. Yeah, is this oh, we already did that. No, How could well, we have? Well, He's no, a, I mean, we haven't even about talked it, about Jeff's dad and Clancy's big Yeah, I was going to say, like, the, the other okay, thing that we right. haven't gotten to is uh, the person that Cody fucking hates, Anthony Edwards, kicking some ass. Yeah, he kicks he some ass. He gets his shoulder Pretty- fucked up. He, he, he's the one who walked out of that building. Yeah. He, had he took already a drill in the arm and did not do up. Yeah, he yeah. got drilled in the arm and was still fighting. Come this, on. This is like my favorite. The, my This is probably some of my favorite stuff I've ever seen a drill used in. Like as far as like in a movie, most of the time it doesn't look this good. I liked the yeah. set. Most of the I time they're the just using it to build stuff. With the no. fire blazing in the background <laughs> no, and the and fucking of... tore up fucking house. Like, I thought yeah, it that house awesome. just looked like chaos and yeah. I didn't understand why. When that, yeah. when, that, when, that, when that drill goes into that shoulder, man. Looks like an Aussie music video that going on in hurt. that house. <laughs> like, <laughs> fuck is this going on in here? Why Why? why did Clancy Brown take time to flip the cross upside down? That makes no sense. That was the part, yeah, that was the part I was kind of like, come on. I was like, Really? Really? They, he, he, he redecorated? He's Satan. Okay, I get it. All right. Yeah. Oh, man. We forgot to mention that this whole time there's a nanny. And this Yeah, nanny, because guess what? Forgettable. Yeah, this it's nanny. Pretty forgettable. Yeah, she doesn't really play much of a point. Until except the end. Other than, well, no. I mean, she doesn't play a point at the end. Yeah, she does. She's, she's the cannon fa- fodder. She, she's the face sacrifice. Hold on, though. Hold on. She's just cannon fodder. Let's give so her a little mommy bit more can credit have a normal here. Face. Did, did anybody get this impression from this is that. She comes down. She's definitely a super fan of the mom. Yeah, she yeah, is. absolutely. And that's which is really like seems to be the reason why she came in to do whatever. Then also, I'd like to note that like she kind of looks like the mom a little bit. Yeah, and she wants yeah. to try on all of her clothes and shit. Yeah, and oh, also, she definitely wants to. F- I think the dad is fucking her. I oh, think yeah. the dad is fucking her as well. One. Wants to. But this 100%. this this nanny does give us what I think is my favorite line in this movie, which is like she's trying to console Jeff, yeah. and he just like oh, there's yeah. silence. She's just like. You're not my mom. I'm just like, <laughs> yes. What? But that was, was is that bad. written in the script? Yes, See, it was. Yes, it was. No, and I think that's off. so bad. I, I he went off you, cuff again. Here's the thing. This is why I think I think this script just I think it was trying to do a lot of different things and it just wasn't communicating a lot of it right. One liners too. Like, no, I think what I mean is I think they were trying to go deep. I think that was actually supposed to be a major part of that film was that this woman was coming into this house. And trying to take over the place of her mother, he's always trying to put on her clothes. And then that final line where he's like, "You, you're not my mom." I it's like, it wasn't even a final line that happened like ten yeah. minutes no, into I, the film. No, I know, like, but what I'm saying is, is like, just in terms of like solidifying yeah. this idea of like, <laughs> dude, wait, okay, so obviously, and, and what's funny is she's is literally be, just offering some advice on how to cope with loss. It's terrible. They yeah. were trying to jam so much into this movie, Mike. I 100 percent agree with you. Yeah, 100. percent I think they were trying to do something. Yeah, with and that. then they decided to edit out 99 percent. Of her scenes, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm dead serious. I think that's probably what happened. She was yeah. just in it probably, to get we, a fucking dad. Well, she's now she's there just to have her face ripped off so mom can every come time back she, and look pretty. Every time she came on screen, I was like, oh yeah, she's still here. Because what she's happens, still in this Chris? house? <laughs> what happens? Mom comes back. Nope. Uh, well, yeah, I guess nope, you're right. She doesn't. No. Nope. Well, we. She does. I guess Clancy dies. No. Yeah, no, Clancy's dead at this point, and the dog is still on the loose. That we never see that dog well, die. We, we we do before. Right. That's because the dad, Jeff's dad, kills it before he yeah, he battles with it, Clancy. Right? Yeah, he she blows the, it away. Doesn't the dog walk off from that? No, it, no. Walk, it no. limps no. off into the house and dies. It goes yeah. off into the oh, darkness. Okay. Oh, yeah. it does. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's eaten by the nothingness. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. Cool. Yeah. Extreme darkness kills these creatures. Yeah. Nobody knows yeah, that. so then we get up to the attic, and it's like Edward. It's like a fucking like yeah. he's in a suit. Edward, he looks yeah. like he turns a little ventriloquist the dummy. Omen? Like, like yeah. what happens? This here? turned into the weirdest fucking part of this movie. And that's that's the part, what I'm saying. Hold it's on, no. dream like or I night- got the what I got the impression was is that this was the plan of the demons the whole time was like, but they want him. To, I think they want to kill. Edward Furlong. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, and I think they want to bury him, him and have him come back yes. to life. That's a clear I agree, thing. I agree. I'm, I'm trying to figure out if these things possess whatever possesses you when you're put into that pet cemetery. If you still hold some semblance of your life in your head and you still desire the things that you 
Yeah, there's pieces of your there's personality. There's pieces there. of your personality in there. And I'm gathering that Real mother comes back up to a mall and thing. says, she's like, I'm going to start my family again, but I have to kill all of you because I, we want to live together as demon family, I guess, or something. Yeah. I That's what I, I Join I, me in the afterlife. No, no, I, I agree think, with you. I think, no, I think, I, think the, right. I think the demon mom was just trying to manipulate him into dying and then he would not be... They would hit. He would not be. I think. It, I think you called it when you called them deadites. I think they're the same thing. They're yeah. trickster demons. What basically. is the end game? You, but you didn't. Want, you don't think she wanted to have? Uh, I think no, no. Family. I think she Jeff just to wanted to add. To they I wanted think. another uh, deadite to the ranks. That's I think it. she. That's wanted, what do yeah. you mean, though? But she wanted. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. But it wasn't like some like. Oh, we'll be a family in the afterlife. It's more or less right, right. like uh, yeah, I'm just gonna tell you this shit to convince that. you. She's using that to convince just like a deadite would. Like yes. how they change and they like yes. try to manipulate you into yes. dying. Yes. That's what True. I think that yeah. and I think it's working in this scene because he comes out dressed like he's going to the fucking prom. Yeah, he's, got, he's waiting <laughs> right? for his prom date. Yeah. <laughs> right? And the suit doesn't even fit clearly. No, it's, ah, it's a very it's weird so fucking scene. scene. He's got he Chase's has this suit dark on. Look on his face like like Well, he just he just buried his mom again, I guess. That yeah, would I guess probably, maybe it was a traumatized thing. No. That'd be he's like, kind of possessed or something at this point by the fact that his mom He has to he be. Re- he's kind of insane, I'm sure, from seeing all these dead things yes, come back to life. Yeah, that's what I'm probably like, mentally snapped if anything. Yeah. So so the mom fuck kills kills the nanny with a shard of glass in the fucking face. And uh, to the face, <laughs> and a fire breaks out because she knocks all her shit on the floor and lights yeah. it on fire. Mm-hmm. That's kind of a weird thing. It just yeah. was a weird way she to. She purposely like, lights it on fire. She's like got a little bic lighter and she's like, yeah, trying to get it. You know, it's like this is like a ghost mom. Like I don't know. Yeah, and then and then Clyde shows up and he 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 starts some shit. He's trying to. Yeah, he's like. Basically, join us. Or yeah, some he's shit. like, he's like, I'm gonna kill you, Jeff, because yeah. you're new in town. Yeah, and I, and I still have a grudge against that concept that you might yeah. be new in this town. And I'm dead, and you're not dead. But then yeah. Dad comes in. Yeah, Dad shows up. He looks Bumble like shoulder. fucking hell. Yeah, he has mm-hmm. been through hell, bitten, like bitten, stabbed, fucking drilled yeah. in the bite wound. Yep, <laughs> like got a shit beat out of him by fucking Gus. He's, he's a tough, fucking, he's a tough he, ass dude. Fucking he's tough as motherfucker, man. After <laughs> tough I, I think, here. A, after this, after this movie, I thought like you know what'd be cool is like Pet Cemetery Three, like Jeff and his dad just traveling. Traveling yeah. the country, killing other, Fucking killing other, kill pet other pet cemeteries, <laughs> yeah. taking them out. It's the, Ash versus the Evil Dead is what you just described. Yeah, yeah. it essentially is. Yeah, yeah. except it's Anthony Edwards, motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. Anthony <laughs> Edwards, chicken <laughs> fucking ass. They get out and then mom melts. Yeah. To, to death. Yeah, yeah, this is the part where I was trying she to figure this. She catches on fire. Ah, uh, yeah, but she melts yeah. because that's not her skin on her face, guys. It's the big reveal. Come yeah. on, watch that's, a movie. That's the that's the that's the nanny's face, right? But why would her skin melt? Because it was it melting where the fucking the ch- burn the was. The chunk smeared off. Yeah. yeah. And like, then, oh, she was using some kind of glue or something? Uh, that probably. W- I mean, you know, glue. maybe not crazy glue, but sure. She's in an attic full some of shit. Some sort Who of ad- adhesive was up there. Yeah. Okay. You know, it was, right. like, it was yeah, a two part epoxy that I didn't have time to cure. Just trying to figure, yeah, I'm just trying and to figure then, out how this thing came sure. off because she, I, it wasn't, you know, heat. Yeah, heat obviously, but skin burns, it, it don't melt. melt. Yeah, it don't oh melt like God. wax. No, it's so it ridiculous. Burns. <laughs> um, it melts. So fucking ridiculous. I've seen it melt. But also, anyhow, like, they, I, they burn. I also feel like we kind of like skipped over the, like, uh, like through all of these gore scenes and like special yeah. effect scenes, like, there's some gross out moments where there's fluid squirting out of open wounds mm-hmm. and things like that, like really intense close ups. You know, I didn't get Those a whole me. lot in this movie. It's got me. Yeah. I didn't get a whole lot. My the mo- the worst the worst the worst one for me is the dog wound that the dad like yeah. pokes that, and it oozes out. And that's the only time I'm I would, like, Ugh. I wouldn't say the special effects are bad. I think in this like movie. the neck thing and when he's at the table, it's all like you can yeah. see the shit going down his throat. I think the wound like, the wound effects are kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, but overall but, special effects I weren't. Yeah. Like super memorable to me in this movie. The melting they were terrible. Good. I mean, the like, melting terrible. looked Come goofy on. as fuck. Yeah, Come and, on. and Z- Zowie's demon face mask. That was fun. Oh, oh my god. god. We didn't even talk about stupid. We didn't even talk about w- the one scene that I feel like could say, put this into a cult film status. Oh, one and scene. And that's the dog sex scene. Where the dog sex scene is fucking weird. That yeah. is like, and and also how horribly bad that mask looks on that 
poor woman who had to be in this yep. scene. Perfect dog. Breath. Oh yeah, Ch- oh yeah. Chase has a sex scene with yeah. a dog head. Lady. Sex yeah. fantasy that I turns into a that. nightmare, but not. I don't know. And then he's he wakes kinda... up, and the actual dog is just sitting there. Like, yeah. I'm gonna fuck your but shit up. God damn, is this scene not so dated that the soft blue lighting that turns into this like tracery, you know, yeah. like vision. Like nightmare vision, I guess, mm-hmm. and it's just this fucking woman with the worst dog mask on, just riding this. It guy. It looks like those ones you get from Walmart, or you see all the people take pictures with, where you're like, dude, nine hundred other people's heads have been yeah, in that shit. Yeah, definitely looks like something you would get from Party City or something. Yeah. Like, right. but like one of the good masks from Party City. Yeah, yeah. And then the expensive ones from the back room. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, if that shit doesn't make you laugh out loud, like I don't know. And like, it's just so funny because like I don't understand how anybody's looking at that dog and saying there's something fucking wrong with that dog. <laughs> right, his face that, is all morphed and yeah, shit. That's weird. I mean, like I mean, is Gus is literally the color of like white paint. <laughs> yeah, in this movie, like, like how, no do you, how do you not look and be like questioning any? You know, of this. I thought you had more color yesterday. Yeah. Today, no today you're gray, covered in dirt, and you are of an oozing wound on your <laughs> neck. I think you're fine, though. Another like, laughable moment, man. Like, even if this wasn't all bad enough, like going through it at the very end right before it goes into the credit scene and they're driving through the forest. They've, oh, got, yeah. these, they've got these cameo <laughs> shots coming in of every yes. character that you saw in like the a, movie. Yeah, what the fuck <laughs> was that? that, that yeah, all, the people that died. all the people who died. It was like, it, yeah. it gave us a kill recount at yeah. the end. And it was like, it was like a 90s As TV done by intro. Glamour shots. <laughs> oh, fucking weird. Everybody's weird. happy it's and just, smiling. Yeah, it looked like a ni- the opening to a 90s sitcom. It, it like, yeah, it looks, it looks like those, those family portraits where it was like, always like the couple was sitting there like yeah. in the 80s and there'd be like a little picture of the baby looking down on the family but it was you know what I'm talking no, about it was yeah. worse than yeah. that dude it was like the sh- yeah. it was like the like turn to the camera and laugh like <laughs> yeah yeah exactly like, yeah, like oh a my Brady the good times in the movie yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, they're all gone now what do you say we rate this mammer jammer uh, yeah let's do it all right chris what do you want to rate it i want to rate it drew buddies drew Buddies. The hell is a Drew, Drew buddy? buddy. Drew yeah. Buddy is what Clancy Brown constantly refers yeah. to him Drew as. Buddy. Hey, Drew Buddy. Drew Buddy. Yeah. Even in his evil self, Drew Buddy. <laughs> so Drew Buddies it is. Drew Buddy. Drew Buddy. I Drew buddy. will go first on this one. I think I went first in the last one too, and it's the same score as the last one. We'll go with a two on this one. Not, I did not have a lot of fun with this one. I don't know if this is going to be a cult film in the future. I could see how some people would enjoy it to be laughable, but I don't know if it's bad enough to be so bad it's good. That's why I kind of struggle with this. I think it's just a bad 90s horror movie, which there was a lot of, uh, especially in the sequel zone, too. Um, I don't know. It just didn't have enough for me. It didn't have enough for me. I don't think Furlong was uh, Furlonging enough for me. Furlonging. Furlonging. I'm furlonging for, long. Long. I'm for, for some more Furlong. Yeah. I thought, like, it was just so, it was just too, like, there was just so corny. Like, Clancy Brown's performance came off as corny instead of scary to me. Um, but I don't know. Not so bad that it was, again, like, funny. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I like, I'm going to go with a two on this barring maybe another watch with friends. Cause I think maybe that might be more fun. Uh, but I'm at a two on this one. It's just, it's just not so bad. It's good, but it's just bad enough. It's bad. Yeah. Let's go with Mike next. Yeah. I'm going to give this a one and a half. I just thought this was like a terrible <laughs> film. <laughs> Like I don't think it was funny really at any points. I you I know, did think you were quiet this whole episode. What's that? I did think you were quiet this whole episode. <laughs> I didn't have much like say about this film. <laughs> like it was just kind of like really bad acting. Yeah. Um, story doesn't make a lot of hell of a lot of sense. No. Um, yeah. There's a few things that are kind of absurd, like the mask of the dog, and but that's like about it. Clancy Brown's performance, yeah, it's maniacal and everything like that. But I. It's not a place. It it feels more like again the the sequelitis problem of the '90s, where everybody seemed to think like, okay, well now we got to do it bigger and better. Yeah, like it wasn't so much like hey, like a, I don't think they did a whole Toby Hooper thing where they were like, hey, I'm gonna take a like a funny take on this. I'm gonna take my old no thing I agree and I'm gonna go in a different direction. Um, this was more like it almost felt like I, I don't know if it's true or not and. 
but it, it's almost like a bunch of producers came in and said, no, nah, we got to do better than that. Like, we got to bring back, like, an adult, like a, like a human. And, like, he's got to be, like, crazy. And it's got to be, like, Clancy Brown. Like, it feels like a bunch of people just saying, like, it all has to be bigger. It's the Gremlins yeah. 2 effect. Right. And, and, and no, none of it made any sense. It happened, yeah. it happened later, right? It happened later on in film history where they're like, dude, we had this fucking kick ass movie. Everybody thought it was real. Blair Witch Project. Let's, yeah. What do we do next? Blair Witch Project 2. But this time we go all Hollywood with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It just kind of felt like that yeah. a little bit. I don't know. I actually um, don't have a problem with Book of Shadows. Thank you. <laughs> you what? I said, I actually don't have a problem with Book of Shadows. Thank really? you. I actually right. own a steel Maybe, book. Of why don't book you of choose Shadows? a dumb one? Why don't you choose one day? Yeah. Maybe I will. One day. Um. Yeah, I just I, I I don't think it's a, but I don't think it's a cult film, but I think it's a must watch because of the lore. I mean, if you like, Putt Cemetery is a great is a good film. Like, I mean, well, it's an okay film, but <laughs> like, if you if you like the story and you like the lore, I kind of feel like you got to watch too just to check it out. You know, I don't know, man. Okay. Good answer. Good answer. I, I, that's Let's the only show way I can me, say Show it. me, uh, check it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, it is uh, not. Uh, uh, no, the X is. There you go. <laughs> check it out. Uh, good. I don't know. Okay. One so, and a half, I'm and done. he said, check it out. <laughs> <I'm done>. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle. Uh, point half a star. Point half a star. I don't even know if that's a real thing, Kyle. Yeah, and uh, check it out. Yeah. <laughs> check it out. Make sure you check it out. Yeah, I'm going to come in at a uh, two on this one um, for a lot of the same reasons that uh, Mike pointed out, which it was going to be my jumping off point, which was like you know, the thing I disliked about this movie was there was too many things coming back to life. Like, I... I think what makes the original Pet Cemetery work is because it's kind of a haunted house thing. It's kind of this cool, suspense-driven horror movie where there's this creepy-ass fucking kid, and he's hiding everywhere, and he's popping out randomly and fucking being crazy and insane. This one is just like, yeah, they, they thought, well, if we have more more dead people coming back to life, that's just going to mean it's going to be better. And I think they failed on that. And I, I actually don't have too much of a problem with Clancy Brown's performance. I, th- I thought it was entertaining. And I thought it was perfect for the tone of this film. Um, but, yeah, I mean, for the most part, I did find myself laughing at a few things, at a few parts, because it was ridiculous. I will say it probably is a cult film, or it could be a cult film. It's just not my cult film. So I'm going to come in at a two, and I don't think you need to watch this because it's part of the lore. <laughs> Disagree on that I, one. I mean, I, I, but Like, everybody, any every horror fan has seen Pampet Cemetery. Yeah, for sure. But like, it's just to me, it feels like okay. I mean, if you like the film, if you like Pet Cemetery, you're not yeah, gonna watch like this the one. really <laughs> bad sequel then, just to you know complete the set. I mean, there's a lot of <laughs> shitty sequels that I've never watched because why? I guess so. You're not oh, a completionist. He's, I get never, it. he's never seen. He's never seen Wishmaster three. <laughs> God right. damn, no, I haven't. Right. Two, he has. Okay. Three, no. <laughs> I've never seen. Uh, I've never seen Leprechaun four. Oh, you really? should. Actually, in four's in space. I saw that one. Yeah. I never saw three or two. Not Vegas. You never saw in the hood. Not I saw Vegas. Good. Never saw Vegas. Vegas. I thought Vegas was okay. I like Vegas. Pretty bad. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> fucking awful. So yeah, two from Kyle. Two from Kyle. This is one of the things I, I want to go back to Kyle. You said that I, real quick before we get to Chris. Uh, I agree with you in the fact that Tony, uh, Tony, Clancy Brown, <laughs> fucking Tony Brown, Tony Brown, <laughs> Tony Hooper, Clancy Brown's <laughs> performance is perfect for the tone of this film, but that's also a problem is the tone of this film. Yeah. That's the kind of my point of what this acting yeah, is. It's like, it's, a, it's, a, it's like the director let him get away with that. And, it, and he went with what the director said. Who knows if that was like, it's too cartoony for me. Chris. Yeah, hard to say why, but I like this film better than you guys. Like, absolutely, I, no you do. shit, yeah. you do. No shit, <laughs> you I shall. Mean, no, we saw all saw it coming. It's very, it's it's interesting because I can't argue with what you guys are saying and like what your criticisms are of the film, but I think I just got more joy out of watching it as far as like I don't think it's a so bad it's good if we're like putting it in the list of like top so bad it's good films, but. It has some pretty crazy ideas, and I like that about the movie. I mean, I'm a, I've cut like I was saying earlier. I like a lot of Edward Furlong movies for some reason, and Weird. even though it's be- they're not great performances, like 
I don't know. He just kind of picked these odd nineties movies and it, 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 it's kind of fun to watch. I like Clancy Brown's character a lot in this movie. I think he actually elevates the film like, and makes it more enjoyable because of his performance. True, he elevates I think the effects in. are actually pretty well done where they're used. I like the, I agree with Mike. If you like the lore of pet cemetery, definitely watch it because it kind of tries to, because it's the same director, they do throw in a lot of things, or little things, I should say, that like will trigger you, but it's not so obvious. Mm-hmm. You know? Trigger you what? Like either like Stephen King related or like th- kind of throwing oh, little, references. Yeah, references that will throw back a little bit to the original. Like I don't think this is a direct sequel. I just think it's another story happening in the same town. So it's just an extension. It is a direct sequel. It's just an extension. Like, I mean, they don't touch on the creeds very much, which yeah. is the whole first story. He's saying it's in the same universe. Yeah, it's, it's the in universe. the same universe. They don't really like. They reference the creeds so many times in this movie. They what do you reference talking the creeds, about? Like six they tell the story yeah. and then they go back to the guy who used to live there. That's the only two things I can think of. They ride past the creeds house. They're not talking about <laughs> those creeds, dude. They're talking about the Apollo creeds. The Apollos, okay. Yeah. But, anyways, I like. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I ultimately like find enough good and bad in this movie to to enjoy it every time I watch it. Um, and I do recommend checking it out. I think it does have those a couple classic moments. I think it's an entertaining film to watch and it is totally bad 90s. The music is really off and weird and I'm going to give it a three and a half. Three and a half Drew oh, Buddies. I thought that five was coming. Well, I thought that five that was saw, I dropping. saw that five coming over the hill. Yep. Oh, man. Nope, <laughs> Chris. What, Chris, what's better, Pet Cemetery One or Two? One. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't oh, know. See, at least you said that. I didn't know <laughs> good, answer, good, an- I didn't know good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Gonna walk into that buzzsaw. All right, guys. <laughs> that is our show for this week. All right, but before we go, we have a review to read. Who wants to read it? I'll get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get it. I'll get it. <laughs> Where is he from? I get it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> small town. Small town, Maine. Someone's at the door. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> you know, Arizona all your life. It comes out every now and again. Tom Bell I get it. I get it. Like the, yeah. Jesus. This one uh, comes from <laughs> Warp Zone <laughs> Graphics. Excellent podcast for fans of all types of film. Five stars from Warp Zone Graphics. And they say, I just wanted to say thanks to Cody, Kyle, Mike, and Chris. I don't know them, but I feel like they're my friends. No, we are. For all the fantastic hours of entertainment, I spend a lot of time in my car and I listen to a lot of podcasts. And this has quickly become one of my absolute favorites. I was cautious in approaching the show because they've reviewed uh, many of my all-time favorite films, and I but I feel they've done them justice. They've also inspired me uh, to watching films that I most likely would have never encountered before, such as Suspiria, which I absolutely loved. Thanks a ton. Keep up the fantastic work. I tell everyone I know to check out the show. Thank well, you. <laughs> That's really cool, man. Yeah. Thank you. Love your rapport and varying insights into movies. And yeah, I love Congo, too. Woo! Uh, <laughs> and Young Love, which came up tonight, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Long live the cult from Warp Zone Graphics. Hell yeah. That's thank cool. You, Warp, wow. Zone Warp, 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 Warp Zone went, awesome. ba- went back in the archive to get the the Young Love jokes. We got Time Warp. We got new people that don't get the Young Love jokes. Well, even the Congo jokes, I feel yeah. like that doesn't come up as often as it used to. No. Yeah. I mean, they should come back. So should the Young Love. Oh, come on. Congo has definitely been mentioned within the past few episodes. Yeah. Yeah. If it's not I don't think there's an episode you don't mention Congo. I mean, it's, it's a great movie, Mike. I don't know why you wouldn't mention it. Oh, Mike, Congo. it's a Frank. Oh, yeah. No, I did mention it during uh, yeah, Arachnophobia. It's my favorite Michael Crichton film. Because it's. It's uh, a Frank Marshall directed that, and he also directed Congo. So. Oh, yeah. There you go. Oh. So, so, hell yeah. yeah. Last episode was arachnophobia. Thanks for the awesome review. Thank you. Guys, if you would like a shout out at the end of the show, all you have to do is leave us a review on iTunes and we will gladly do that for you. Uh, and then head over to coldfilmandreview.com. Check out the website there. Then head over to YouTube. Like, subscribe, comment. Then check us out on Facebook, Instagram at Cult Film in Review. And then on Twitter at Cult Film underscore review. Then you can follow Kyle at. You can follow me on Instagram at Cult Film underscore Kyle. You can follow Chris at. Cult Film underscore Chris on Instagram. You can follow Mike at. At Mike Salucci on Twitter. You can follow me at VHS Collect on Snapchat and Instagram. That's our show for this week. Remember, if you're going to join a cult, make sure they watch good movies. We'll see you next time. <laughs>